Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showcasing builds for the Rogue that I've created that are good for open world outdoor content, leveling, world quest, maybe playing with a friend or two. So these are gonna be, you know, small group outdoor content sort of builds that we're gonna be taking a look at. For each one of these builds, I'm gonna have resources available for you. So I'm gonna have a weak auras rotation helper that I've designed specifically to help with these builds. And I'm also gonna have talent builds available for you for every 10 levels starting at level 30. All these resources are going to be available on the channel Gilded server, which you can find a link to in the description below. I definitely encourage you to come check out the Gilded server. It's not just a WoW gaming server, although we do play WoW and schedule events for WoW there. And we have a lot of resources for World of Warcraft, but we also have a book club. We have a media, uh, a movie club. We have a health and fitness club. We also uh, have different groups for different types of games. So if you're like maybe looking forward to Destiny Lightfall or Diablo 4, you know, we're putting together groups and things for that as well so there's a lot going on and it's basically just a place for you know adults that want to play games and uh, talk about media and help each other out and stuff to to gather and uh, just kind of build a community there so definitely encourage you to check the link in the description below for the gilded server and come check it out so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in here. So we're going to start with Outlaw, then we're going to go to Assassination, and then we're going to take a look at Subtlety. Um, before we get into looking at the specs individually, uh, I want to show you a couple of things. So first off, as we're going through this, you're going to see here in this area, uh, when I am engaged in fighting an enemy, you're going to see the Weak Aura's Rotation Helper pop up. Okay, and basically you just follow this from left to right. And if you do, it'll kind of walk you through a good rotation for the build. All right. And uh, these weak ours helpers do not play the build for you. You still have to make uh, quite a few decisions on your own. But if you're just going to fight a normal enemy, then nine times out of 10, you could follow the weak ours helper left to right and uh, it's gonna get you through the rotation and you can kind of figure out, you know, you could take a look at it, you know, fight something slowly and kind of see what's going on. We're gonna use these to help us kind of go through the rotations as well. Um, but these are gonna be available. They are specific to the talent builds that you're gonna see in the videos today. Um, but uh, these are gonna be a great resource for you if you would like to use them. And again, these are the things that are gonna be available on the Gilded server. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to jump into our spell book here and we're going to talk about the abilities that we have in the rogue tab that uh, most rogue specializations are going to be uh, now rogues have a lot of abilities a lot of them are utility abilities that you kind of use whenever you want a lot of crowd control different styles of crowd control and a lot of these abilities are the same in concept but sometimes they change uh, name and icon from spec to spec. So we're just going to do a general overview here. And then when we get into each specialization, we'll talk about the specifics. So uh, starting things off with ambush, uh, rogues have stealth. So essentially we're allowed to go stealth where nothing can really see us unless we get too close or it's a really high level compared to us. And uh, from stealth, we can use various abilities. Also, as a rogue, we're going to be generating a resource called combo points, and then we can spin those combo points on moves that are called finishers. So keep that stuff in mind as we go through the spell book. So ambush is kind of our default stealth opening ability. It does a bunch of damage, and it gives us some combo points. Uh, blind is a incapacitate effect here that's going to disorient a target for one minute. You can use this in combat. So if you've pulled like two enemies, uh, then you can use blind to disorient one of them for a minute while you finish off the other one. Cheap shot is a four second stun that we can use from stealth. Cloak of Shadows is an interesting ability that we really won't be using that much out in this type of content, but it does provide you some magic immunity and will remove all harmful spell effects. So generally, um, this isn't something you're going to need to use against just like a normal enemy out in the open world. Um, but there may be some use case for it. Or if you are playing in like war mode and, you know, someone happens upon you and starts casting, you know, some harmful spell effects on you, you can use Cloak of Shadows to 
remove that effect. Crimson Vial is our default um, sustain ability here. This is going to heal us. It's got a 30 second cooldown and it will heal us for 25% of our maximum health over four seconds. We have detection, which just lets you detect a type of creature that you want to detect. Distract will cause a distraction to nearby monsters. Typically, this is good to help you stealth by them if you think that you're going to have difficulty doing so. It also kind of stops the normal pathing movement of an enemy as well. So we could throw like a distract. Boop. And so you can see it stops and that will let you kind of stealth around the target without worrying about maybe accidentally running into them or uh, being in a situation where two enemies cross paths or something and it's hard for you to uh, to get by them. Evasion is our default damage mitigation ability here. It's got a two minute cooldown. It increases your dodge chance by 100% for 10 seconds. So it doesn't really reduce any damage, but it will make you dodge more attacks, which will allow you to uh, mitigate some of that damage. Next, we have Faint. So this is an ability that reduces damage taken from area of effect attacks. And typically, you're not going to be using this a whole lot in this type of content just because you should be moving out of the area effects most of the time. Um, but you may occasionally want to use it. And then we have Kick. Kick is our default interrupt ability. So if something is casting a spell, we can kick it. That'll interrupt the spell and prevent them from casting more spells from that same school for five seconds. Kidney Shot is a finishing move that uses combo points, and it will stun the target for a certain length of time that increases based on the number of combo points you spend. So the default maximum number of combo points that you can generate is five. And if you use five, Kidney Shot will stun the target for six seconds, whereas if you use one, it'll stun the target for two seconds. And we have Pick Lock. This lets us open locked chest and doors. Pick Pocket will let us pick pockets from stealth, but the thing that you are pickpocketing needs to have pockets. <laughs> so typically it only works on humanoids. We're going to skip over poisons and come back. Sap is an ability we can use from stealth that will incapacitate, to th incapacitate the target for one minute. Only works on humanoids, beasts, demons, and dragonkin. But the nice thing about sap is it does not put you into combat. So you can sap something and then you can stealth by it. And it won't pull you out of stealth because it doesn't put you into combat. Next, we have Shiv. Shiv will do an attack that dispels enrage effects, which we typically don't have to deal with in outdoor content, but maybe occasionally on like an elite mob or, um, you know, a stronger enemy. They might have an enrage that you can dispel with Shiv. Um, and then it will apply a concentrated form of your active non-lethal poison. So we'll come back and talk about that when we look at the poisons. Then we have Shroud of Concealment. This is essentially an AoE stealth. So for 15 seconds after using this ability, all party and raid members within 30 yards will essentially be given stealth. So if you're out here, you know, playing with a buddy or two, then you may be able to use Shroud of Concealment to stealth by something if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, but then it goes on a six minute cooldown. So it's not something you can just use to kind of like stealth around everywhere with your friends. It's an occasional stealth that you can use on other people. You don't really need to use this for yourself because you just go into your regular stealth. Then we have Sinister Strike. This ability does kind of change names and icons based on whatever specialization we're playing, but this is our bread and butter combo point generating ability. So when we don't have a different combo point ability, that we want to use we use sinister strike it does some damage and depending on the spec it'll have some different effects and it will generate combo points for us and we'll talk about the specific effects as we talk about the different specializations next we have slice and dice this is a combo point spending ability uh, this will um, increase our attack speed by 50 percent and the duration that we have that buff increases the more combo points we spend on it. So again, the default maximum combo points you can spend is five. So if we spend five points, that'll give us 36 seconds of this buff. Whereas if we spend one point, we'll get 12 seconds of the buff. This is something that generally for most specializations, we're going to want to maintain at all times just to increase our damage output. Then we have sprint. This will increase our movement speed by 70%. 
for eight seconds. It's got a two minute cooldown, so it's just a nice speed buff. Um, usable indoors, which is typically if you go in a dungeon or you're in a cave or something, that's kind of the best places to use this ability because outside of that, you might as well just hop on your dragon or run away. Then we have our stealth ability, which we've been talking about quite frequently already. Next, we have Vanish. Vanish will essentially put you into stealth from combat. So if you're in a combat situation and you're like, man, I'm about to die, you can hit Vanish. It'll put you in stealth and everything will stop targeting you. You will still get hit by AoE um, effects and things like that. So if you go into Vanish and then you get hit by an AoE, it will still deal the damage to you. But for the first three seconds after vanishing, damage and harmful effects will not break stealth. Uh, so you still need to get the heck out of dodge if you're in a situation where maybe you're fighting, you know, um, an enemy that has a lot of ground attacks. But this will let you get out of combat, and it's a great move to use to, like, save yourself in a bad situation. Then we have our passive, which is safe fall. This reduces damage from falling, and it's quite a bit. You can fall from quite a good height uh, as a rogue and not take any damage. So then going back over to our poisons real quick, rogues have two different types of poisons. They have lethal poisons and non-lethal poisons. Lethal poisons typically will do some sort of damage application and will have some other effect, whereas non-lethal poisons will not do damage, but they will usually do some sort of status effect. By default, the rogue has two lethal poisons and one non-lethal poison available. So the two lethal poisons that we have available are instant poison and wound poison. Instant poison applies a poison buff to your weapon for one hour, and it gives a 30% chance to just deal additional damage when you're attacking. The wound poison does the same thing, but it does less damage in exchange for reducing the healing that the target receives as well when the poison is applied. Now, for our builds, if it's a choice between instant poison and wound poison, we pretty much always want instant poison. That's the one that's going to do the most damage, and we don't really care about reducing the healing that a target receives um, on a like open world leveling sort of basis because we're going to kill things so fast it doesn't really matter. Okay, this is better for PvP or if you're in like a dungeon or a raid where there's a specific enemy um, that you want to make sure that their healing received is reduced. So typically we're going to want that instant poison. Now you're allowed to apply an instant poison and a non-lethal, uh, non, sorry, a lethal poison and a non-lethal poison at the same time to your weapons. So we're going to have instant poison applied and then the only uh, normal non-lethal poison we have is crippling poison. Again, one hour buff, 30% chance to reduce the target's movement speed by 50% for 12 seconds. This is not something we usually need. Uh, in open world content because the target's just going to be attacking us anyway. Um, but this is definitely good to have on for PvP. And also just in PvE, we can have it on our weapons. So why not, right? Uh, so those are the poisons. And again, Shiv, when it is used, will apply a concentrated form of your active non-lethal poison. So in this case, with wound, uh, crippling poison here, it'll apply a more powerful um crippling poison to the target when we use it okay so that is an overview of just kind of the rogue abilities that all the rogues are going to have so now what we're going to do is get in and we're going to look at our outlaw rogue so we're out here in the onaran plains so that i can show you the rotation on enemies that will actually like attack us and die i like this a little bit better than the target dummies we can also move around and fight some different type of uh, types of enemies as well. That being said, I will let you guys know that there is like a bear druid that's constantly out here. I don't know if they're a bot or whatever, but we might run into them and have to kind of like course correct on the enemies we're attacking to really show our rotations. But we'll just do what we have to do until then. OK, so uh, on my rogue, I am currently level 61, almost level 62. So that's where you're going to be seeing this build at. But I do have this build all the way up to level 70. Uh, this is what the build looks like here. Um, as far as uh, the abilities go, um, there aren't really any additional abilities we're going to be adding to this build. 
So let's go ahead and jump into the spell book and we're gonna look at the outlaw specific things that we need to touch on. Uh, okay, so first we want to take a look at our Sinister Strike. So our Sinister Strike, like I told you, this is our default combo building ability. Now the Sinister Strike has an additional effect that says it has a 40% chance to hit an additional time. Okay, that is a big thing that we have as a rogue. And we'll come back to the rest of this in a minute. But just know that our default combo generator has a chance to hit an additional time. All right, so let's talk about the abilities that we have here. So we have Adrenaline Rush. This is a three minute cooldown, essentially steroid ability we can use. It increases our energy regeneration rate. So in addition to spending, building and spending combo points, our default resource that we have is energy. Uh, we start at max energy, we spend it and it regenerates over time. So this increases the rate at which that energy will regenerate. It also increases our max energy by 50 during the time that it's active, and it increases our attack speed by 20% for 20 seconds. So this just allows us to do all kinds of like extra abilities and not worry about essentially our energy regeneration at that time. We have Between the Eyes. This is a finishing move that spins combo points. Uh, this will deal damage with our pistol. So as an outlaw rogue, we don't wear a pistol as a weapon, but we just kind of have one that we use for our abilities. Uh, this will fire a shot with the pistol, which will increase your critical strike chance against the target by 20%. Now, the damage and the duration of the buff increase with the number of combo points you spend. With our build, we actually have access to seven combo points so instead of generating up to five we can generate up to seven and typically with between the eyes we want to use the maximum number of combo points to hit as hard as we can it's overkill on the buff because usually whatever we're attacking is not going to last the 21 seconds that you see here but we just want to get that maximum damage and then we have a critical strike chance increase buff on the target for the duration uh, of the rest of the time they're alive pretty much then we have Blade Flurry. So Blade Flurry is basically the only real way that we can do AOE stuff as a outlaw rogue with this build. Okay, this is an instant cast ability. It's 30 seconds and it will hit. The ability itself does hit five nearby targets for damage and then will cause your single target attacks to also strike up to four additional nearby enemies for 50% of normal damage for 10 seconds. So uh, a lot of times with some of these AOE buff abilities, you kind of want to hit them and then start doing your abilities. Even if you're a little far out, you know you're going to pull. So you, you kind of throw the initial pull, give yourself the buff, and then start doing your AOE. Blade Flurry, you want to be right up next to the things so that the Blade Flurry damage hits. And then for the next 10 seconds, anything you do is going to hit everything that's not your main target for 50% of the damage. And I say everything because typically you're, you're not really gonna be pulling more than five things, but maybe if you're in a group or something like that, or you're trying to push yourself, you might be. So it's up to five, but typically it's gonna hit. You're gonna be pulling twos and threes and that kind of stuff. And then we have Dispatch. Dispatch is our default combo point spender on the Outlaw Rogue. So when we don't have anything else to spend combo points on, then we're gonna spend it on Dispatch. And Dispatch just does damage. It does more damage per combo point that we spend. We have Grappling Hook. Grappling Hook is a ability that will um, send out a grappling hook like this, and then it will pull us to the grapple point location. So just an additional movement ability. It's got a decently long cooldown with 45 seconds, but you know it'll let you do things like get up on top of this uh, little hill here if you need to get up on top of that hill or move across a gap. It's just a handy utility ability to have, especially out in the open world. Then we have Pistol Shot. So Pistol Shot is our other like main combo point generating ability that we have. Pistol Shot is going to deal damage to the target and reduce their movement speed. We don't really care about the reduced movement speed. And Pistol Shot is an ability we're gonna use when we have a specific buff up that makes it deal more damage and generate an extra combo point. So typically we're not just gonna use Pistol Shot to use it. We're going to wait for the buff that we get 
and then we're going to use it. So that buff comes from Sinister Strike. So Sinister Strike has a 40% chance to hit an additional time, making your next pistol shot half cost, so half the energy, and double damage. And then we have an additional talent that we've picked up that makes it so that when we have that buff, the pistol shot will generate two combo points instead of one. So basically, uh, we're going to be spamming Sinister Strike, and if we get a buff for Pistol Shot, then we'll use Pistol Shot because it'll hit really hard and generate additional combo points for us. Now, next we have Roll the Bones. So with Roll the Bones, this is a 45-second cooldown, and what it will do is it'll roll dice, and it'll give us buffs based on what face the die lands on essentially and we'll have that buff for 30 seconds now you can definitely min max this to try to get the right sort of abilities and things like that we're not really going to get that much into it with this build uh we're basically just going to roll the bones on cooldown to make sure we have a buff up and then that buff is just going to benefit us as we go about our day and we do our quest okay uh, you 100% can absolutely min-max this, but that is not what we're doing here. We're just getting some nice buffs and continuing on with what we're doing. And then our final active ability we have here is going to be Sepsis. Sepsis is a ability that has a minute and a half cooldown. It does a large amount of damage over 10 seconds, okay, and generates a combo point for us. It also grants us one use of any stealth ability, so what we're going to do is we're going to stealth up to the target. We're going to cast ambush is usually what we're going to use here um, as a outlaw rogue. And then we're going to typically we're going to cast sepsis right away because we want to get as much of that 10 second huge damage stuff that we can. That's going to give us one use of any stealth ability so we can cast ambush again and hit the target really hard. If the target survives the entire 10 seconds, which it most likely will not, uh, they suffer additional damage and we can use an additional stealth ability outside of stealth for 10 seconds so we can throw out another ambush. So for some reason, if we're fighting like an elite or something, we get the full damage of sepsis, we get the ambush, the target survives, they take more damage and then we get to ambush them again. So really great ability here. If the target dies before the sepsis duration is um, up, so if they die before that 10 seconds is up, then the cooldown on sepsis gets reduced by 30 seconds. So essentially this has a one minute cooldown in all situations where we are just deleting things, which is a lot of the time, um, which means that we can use this, you know, every one, every two to three, maybe four different enemies, depending on how good your gear is. So then we have our mastery. This is main gosh, however you say it. Uh, our main attacks have a 40% chance to trigger an attack with our offhand that deals additional damage. So we just have a chance to uh, deal more damage with our offhand. Now, another ability we picked up here is we picked up a non-lethal poison called atrophic poison. This lasts for an hour. Each strike has a 30% chance of poisoning the enemy reducing their damage by 3% for 10 seconds. So instead of using the one that slows the enemy, we're gonna apply this one that will reduce the damage that they deal to us. So we get some additional damage mitigation through that poison. All right. So we're gonna take a look at kind of the rotation here. So first off, the weak RS is telling me that, hey, I don't have my poison buffs. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna get my instant poison, which is gonna be the lethal poison we use. And then I'm going to get my atrophic poison, which is going to be the non-lethal poison that we use. Now, something I want to make abundantly clear here. You can min-max your rogue, your rotation, like all this stuff, way more than what we do in this video. Okay? But what we do in this video, 100% works and is great for open world outdoor content. Okay, so please do not take the rotations and stuff that we show here and try to translate these into being the best on the DPS charts uh, against a dungeon boss. Okay, they are not min max to that degree. If you were going to do that for outlaw, you would want to do things like roll the bones for specific buffs and things like that. 
um, or min-max like when you use certain abilities at certain combo points and all that kind of stuff. So please uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but you're going to see these rotations absolutely work for their intended purpose, okay? And again, that's not to say that these are bad rotations. These are good rotations that you can absolutely min-max way harder if you want to. All right, so we're going to go against this mammoth. So we're going to start out, if available, the helper is going to tell you, hey, get in stealth. And then when you get in stealth... Our normal ability, our normal opener, is going to be our ambush. So we're going to ambush the target to deal some additional damage. And then our goal, after we ambush, if we have all our abilities available, our goal is to build up into between the eyes and use between the eyes, which is probably going to kill the target. All right. But we're going to do ambush. Uh, we're going to want to get our roll the bones buff up because we don't currently have it. We're going to want to get our slice and dice going for that increased attack speed. So essentially with Rogue, if you're just standing here in the middle of a field and you haven't been fighting, there's a lot of stuff you want to get going. And so your first target or so is actually just going to be set up. But then what you do is you go from that target to the next target. You just keep the chain going so that your 48 second slice and dice and your 30 second roll the bones are not things that you have to cast on every enemy they're things that you just have to cast uh you know every four or five enemies instead okay so we're probably gonna have to do the setup a few times here uh but i just wanted to kind of let you know like uh you get all this stuff set up on like your initial target and then you go from there all right so we're gonna go into stealth all right, we're going to ambush. We're going to roll the bones to get that buff going. We're going to hit sepsis. Ambush again because we got that free use. Sinister strike. Sinister strike. We have uh, full combo points here. And the nice thing about this is with full combo points, the weak RS is going to tell you, hey, go ahead. You don't have slice and dice. Go ahead and just get that buff going. So that way... When you go to your next target, you've got the slice and dice buff on you. So then we come up, we're gonna ambush, 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 between the eyes, roll the bones because we're out on the buff and the target's dead. And we just wanna keep moving, we wanna keep rolling. We can use our sprint here, you could get on your dragon, go back into stealth. Again, we're gonna ambush, ambush right here. We could use our blade flurry to hit multiple targets. Dispatch, sinister strike, we got our pistol shot buff, so we're going to use that. I know I went a little fast on that, but we're going to loop back around. I'm just trying to kind of show you the flow of this while we have this slice and dice buff up. So again, we do the same thing, come to the next target, ambush between the eyes, roll the bones. We'll hit sepsis, ambush, sinister strike, sinister strike. The target's dead. All right, we're at five combo points. Our slice and dice has two seconds remaining. It's gone. Now, this is one of the situations where the weak ours is going to tell you to cast slice and dice if you have full combo points, so you get the full length of the buff. But you could just decide, you know what? I got four points. I'm going to spend it and just take that slice and dice buff while I've got it. Okay? So, let's see if we can get into this a little more here. Ambush. 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 All right. We got between the eyes. Roll the bones for the buff. Sinister strike. Now we got our buff here called Opportunity. So that's the pistol shot costs 50% less, deals 120% increased damage. And you can see here it awards two combo points. So we really want to use that when we have the buff. All right, we got two targets here. So we do our ambush. They're going to come over. We can blade flurry to deal some damage. And now our AOEs. Our single targets will hit AOEs. We're down on slice and dice, so we're going to get that buff going again. We got our pistol shot buff. So this is one where if you want, you could just find another target. Let's see if we could find one here before our buff goes away. I don't think we'll be able to. Nah. All right, so that time I didn't start from stealth. We got sinister strike between the eyes. We're going to use our pistol shot since we have the buff. And just keep moving on. And you can see, like, we're just grinding through these enemies super quick. Um, we're maintaining our buffs in between our different targets here. And our health is not really decreasing all that much. So we're going to go over to a different little area here. 
And we'll talk about a couple of things. Hey, level 62 uh, from grinding a rock. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go ahead. We got a talent point to put in. Uh, I'm just going to throw this in our leeching poison for right now. Give us a little more sustain. All right, so we're going to head over here to where we have some some tougher actual like red bar enemies that we can showcase this stuff on. So same thing. We're going to come up in stealth, ambush, roll the bones, sepsis. We got our ambush, sinister strike, sinister strike. Get our slice and dice buff back up. Sinister strike, sinister strike. We got our pistol shot buff. All right. So now we're going in with full combo points. We got two enemies here. We're going to go ahead and open up with ambush between the eyes. Let's go ahead and blade flurry. Get our roll to bones. We're just spamming sinister strike now. Dispatch into our pistol shot. Sinister strike. Dispatch. Sinister strike. And you see, for the most part, you know, once we get these buffs going, like we've got our slice and dice, we've got our roll the bones going. Once we've used sepsis um, and we've used between the eyes, all this stuff is like either on cooldown or we have the buff. So then it really just turns into spam sinister strike into dispatch and then use your pistol shot when that's available. Now, in all these situations here, if we were fighting a target with a lot more health, uh, maybe our energy points would get down kind of low when we get to that phase where we're just spamming Sinister Strike over and over again um, and everything's on cooldown. That'd be a good opportunity to use Adrenaline Rush. If we get ourselves into a situation where we're taking a fair amount of damage, then that's where we want to hit our Evasion. Um, but for the most part, what you're seeing here is the, the rotation for Outlaw. It's, uh, it's pretty standard. Um, an additional thing you can do if you're interested, and this is something the weak RS doesn't cover, you just have to want to do this yourself, is you can actually use your kidney shot to stun the target while you're doing damage. So that's a way that you can mitigate some damage for yourself as well. You see right here, I have a bleed on me. Uh, okay, the bleed's gone, so now I can go back into stealth. We'll go up, we'll ambush, we'll slice and dice, ambush again, sinister strike. So we got the pistol shot buff, but we don't have an, enough combo points um, unavailable to use it, so the weak ours is not going to tell you to use it until you can benefit from the full two combo point generation. Does that make sense? We don't want you to use this to generate two combo points if you are already at six out of seven. We want you to just hit center strike, use a finisher, then use that pistol shot to get the full two combo points. All right, so this is pretty much Outlaw. Um, very good, a very fast paced build. It's not super complicated. There's a couple of buffs, like I said, that you want to put up on yourself. But outside of that, it mostly just comes down to um building up your combo points and using them on whatever finisher is available so that's it that is outlaw all right so again i'm not quite level 70 uh as we move into level 70 on the talent tree uh i believe we're mostly going to be picking up more passive abilities we're not really going to be picking up any more active abilities um, we may pick up one more active ability over in this area. Um, so there's a couple of options here. We have our Killing Spree and Dread Blades, but these essentially are going to be big cooldown offensive abilities that you will just use essentially on cooldown um, in order to just get some more DPS. So don't stress too much about those uh, once they are added in. Okay. All right, so now we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at assassination. Now, assassination and subtlety both require us to have daggers equipped. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply our daggers. All right, so dagger, dagger. All 
Okay, so let's get in and talk about the abilities that we have here. Now, you're going to notice that Sinister Strike is not in here uh, because we have a different combo point generating ability from Assassination that comes directly from the talent tree. And then also you're going to notice in our poisons, we have some more options available. So first off, we did take a Trophic Poison again, just like we did on Outlaw Rogue. We actually take this on all three of our specializations. So this is going to be the non-lethal poison that we use. But Assassination, because it's very poison and bleed based, gets an additional uh, lethal poison here called Deadly Poison. So Deadly Poison lasts for an hour and it has a 40% chance to poison the target for nature damage over 12 seconds. And then if they have Deadly Poison debuff on them, each additional poison application will deal direct damage instead. So if you look at Instant Poison, you're going to do 183 nature damage every time it hits. If you look at Deadly Poison, the first application is going to put a debuff on them that does uh, almost 1300 damage over 12 seconds. Then if you hit them and it would apply the poison again, you're going to do 183 nature damage. So essentially it's just a upgraded, better version of instant poison. And it's going to be the one that we use on our assassination rogue. So let's talk about the rest of the abilities that we have. So first off, we have in Venom. This is going to be our like uh, default. We don't have anything else to do. We're going to spend... Uh, our combo points on this finisher ability. So this will deal damage uh, and then it will increase your poison application chance by 30% for the duration. So if we use one combo point, we get a little bit of damage and a two second buff where we have increased poison application chance. If we use five points, we get much more damage and we have six seconds of that increased poison application chance. Now the poison application is definitely super important and you can build your assassination rogue to focus heavily on poisons. We don't really focus heavily on poisons in this build. It's more of a bleed focus build. So in Venom is basically it comes down to everything else we have is on cooldown or we already have this debuff on the target. So we've got five combo points. Let's use them on in Venom. That's kind of the role this plays. Now for us as assassination, we have Fan of Knives as our AOE combo point builder. So this will shoot out a bunch of knives. It deals damage and applies our active poisons at their normal rate. So this is guaranteed poison application on the targets. Then it will uh, also award one combo point for us. Okay. So if we're going to fight multiple enemies, um, up to eight targets, then we can use this ability. We can use it beyond eight targets, but it starts doing uh, less damage. And typically, unless you're playing with a friend who's like a tank or something like that, you're probably not going to be pulling eight targets. Then we have Garot or Garot. I'm going to say Garot. Uh, we have Garot. This is our stealth opener that we're going to use um, on our assassination rogue. Now, you can absolutely use ambush instead for the uh, big chunk of damage, but there's reasons we want to use Garot from stealth uh, because we're going to get some bonuses uh, based on that. And we'll come back and talk about that when we talk about the rotation. But our Garot is going to bleed the enemy over 18 seconds, which is typically way longer than they'll be alive. But it also will silence the target for six seconds when used from stealth. And then we're going to get bonuses if the target has Garot on them, like damage bonuses and things like that. So it's just nice to have this debuff on the target. Mutilate is our replacement for Sinister Strike. This is our combo point building ability that we have on Assassination. It's going to deal damage and it's going to give us two combo points every time we cast it. We have Poison Knife. This just throws a Poison Knife at the target. It's a ranged ability we can use if we want to. It applies our lethal and non-lethal poisons and gives us a combo point. We have Rupture. <clears throat> Rupture is a super important ability for us. So this is a finisher that is going to bleed the target for damage over time. 
and the damage and the time that they have this debuff increases based on the number of combo points that you spend. Now at five points here, we're gonna get a lot of damage over 24 seconds, but 24 seconds is way more time than the target is gonna be alive. So typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast Rupture if we have three or more combo points. So with three combo points, we're gonna get a decent amount of damage. Most things are gonna die within 10 to 15 seconds of us attacking them. So we'll get that Rupture debuff on them the entire time. And then we can spin those other combo points we would be generating generating on our other abilities. So then we also have Serrated Bone Spike. This is an ability from Shadowlands that the Rogue had. This is an ability with a 30 second recharge. It has three charges. It will put a Bone Spike in the target dealing damage initially and then bleed damage every 2.7 seconds until they die or leave combat. It refunds a charge when the target dies as well. So basically, if you put this on the target, you get bleed damage until they die. When they die, you just get the charge back. It gives you one combo point, and then it also gives you one additional per active bone spike. Basically, what we're going to do with this is we're just going to throw it on the target to have a permanent bleed until they die. If you get into an AoE situation, you can use... Uh, these charges on different enemies but typically what you really don't want to do is just stack these all on the same target because you can but you only get one charge back so if you put all three charges on one target when they die you just get one charge back so this is something you can do on like a target that has like a lot of health like an elite or something or a rare spawn but typically you just want to throw a bone spike on, get the extra damage, kill the target, you get the charge back, you throw bone spike on another target. Maybe if you pulled three enemies, you put a bone spike on each of them so you get constant damage going on them until they die. Uh, and then you get all the charges back because you get one per target that dies. So that's typically how we're going to use this in these builds. Uh, then we have our Mastery Potent Assassin. This will increase the damage done by our poisons and bleeds by whatever our mastery percentage is here. Okay. So that is basically what we have going on. Something additional to talk about here is uh, we have our kidney shot. Okay, so on our other rogue specializations, our kidney shot is a stun. On assassination, we are actually picking up some talents where our kidney shot will deal bleed damage over six seconds based on the number of combo points we spend. So typically what we're gonna do is we're actually going to, uh, again, we're gonna maintain our slice and dice, which we have to build up and get that going. We're gonna drop a rupture on the target for the bleed damage. And then Kidney Shot has a 20 second cooldown. So depending on how fast we're killing things, either every enemy or every other enemy we're going to use kidney shot next and kidney shot's going to stun the target do some bleed damage then we're probably going to finish them off if kidney shot's not available we have the slice and dice buff and we've got rupture on the target then we're going to use our in venom so again just like i did with the outlaw rogue i want to let you guys know again that this is uh, a rotation that is going to do work. It's going to do work for the content that it's designed for, but you absolutely uh, can better min-max the rotations that you're seeing for these rogue builds if you're going to be in like a dungeon and things like that. So uh, please keep that in mind as we, as we go forward. These are designed specifically to kill targets quickly and uh, to do your quest and your leveling and that kind of stuff. So... Uh, we're going to get into this. So we've got to apply our deadly poison. And then we've got to apply our atrophic poison. And then it looks like we got to go somewhere else because our, our uh, skin farming bear druid has kind of killed everything in the vicinity. Uh, so we'll have to fly somewhere else to find some enemies to fight here. Uh, maybe we can just go across the way. Yeah, this will work. We got a couple enemies here. Okay, so again, we're going to start from stealth. All right, and when we start from stealth, we're actually going to open with our Garot. Now, there's several reasons for us to do this. Um, first off, we're going to get increased damage. Uh, we're going to get the targets going to be silenced. Um, we just get a lot of nice bonuses for this. 
So we're going to approach the target. We're going to garrot, and then we are able to cast our ambush. Okay, so we do have a period of time there where we can cast our ambush uh, after we cast our garrot. So we kind of still, we get the best of both worlds, essentially. All right, we get to cast the garrot and get the bonuses from that. And then we also have a few seconds where we can ambush the target there as well. Okay, so after we garrot the target and we get our little ambush in, right? If we have three combo points or more, we're going to cast our rupture. That's going to put the rupture debuff on the target and bleed them out. And like I said, you can see this target is not a difficult target. This is a low health, like easy target. And you can see they died way before the rupture damage was gone. If we go and look at this rhino thing over here. All right, so we're going to garrot. If we have three points, we're just going to immediately rupture. If we don't have three points, we're going to ambush to get to at least three points and then rupture. Okay, so garrot, we've got three points, rupture. And you can see right here, we got 14 seconds. I'm just going to go through the weak aura's rotation here and just kind of show you. We're at six seconds. Okay. So that target died before that rupture was gone at three points. All right, so that's why we're just casting a three point rupture. There's really no reason for us to um, make the rupture last longer than that. Let's see, okay, we've got some enemies back over here. All right, so AOE situation, pick the main target. We're gonna garrot, we're gonna rupture. We can go ahead and fan of knives. That's gonna hit everybody with our poisons. We can tab targets and cast our serrated bone spike on each enemy so that damage gets ticking we're gonna buff ourselves with slice and dice now in this build we actually do use shiv for our as part of our rotation so we have some buffs that make shiv hit particularly hard so if you look at that that target was at 41 percent health and we just deleted them with one shiv so we'll, we'll do the same thing on this target here. So we'll come up. We're going to garrot. We're going to rupture. We're going to ambush. All right. We're going to use our Envenom. We didn't even get around to casting our other abilities. You can kind of see, like, you get some pretty good damage here. And again, we're focused on uh, mainly just the bleed damage over the poison damage. So garrot, rupture, ambush. We're going to put our bone spike there. 60 okay we did about 10 percent damage with a shiv there then we're going to go back into mutilate to build up combo points and then we would cast in venom all right so you can kind of see hopefully see what we're getting at here took a little damage there but not much we got that nice safe fall all right garrot Rupture, we could fan of knives for poison. We can get our bone spike, tab over to the other target and get a bone spike. So that damage starts going. Rupture, shiv, mutilate to build up combo points. And again, uh, this will let you know, hey, might as well use those combo points on slice and dice if you want to. So again, garrot, rupture, ambush, put the bone spike on the target, dead. Over here, garrot, rupture, ambush, bone spike on the target, shiv. Then we're going to do our kidney punch, our kidney shot there for that uh, stun and damage, right? So uh, we don't want to use the kidney shot on a target that's low health because it's got the cooldown on it, right? So if your target is below a certain percentage of health, the weak RS helper is going to tell you, uh, not going to tell you to use your kidney shot. It's going to have you save it for the next target because you can just kill the target you're fighting with an Envenom. All right, but again, Garrot, Rupture. I got some lag going on here, I think. Our Bone Spike, we throw out a Shiv. We're good to go. Okay, so we're going to go fight a few of these red bar enemies over here just to kind of uh, show you how this works on enemies with, you know, a normal amount of health. 
But we're going to do the same thing. Stealth. We're going to come up. We're going to garrot. We're gonna go ahead and this is a situation where I'm gonna make the call. We're gonna slice and dice, bone spike, mutilates, get our rupture going, shiv, mutilate. We're gonna go ahead and do our kidney punch, mutilate into an envenom. So we got like the full thing there, right? We slice and diced to get that buff going. Then we put a three point rupture on the target for the bleed. Then we did our kidney shot for the stun and the bleed, which helps us with damage mitigation because they're stunned. Also gives us more bleed damage. And then we built up our combo points and finished off with an Envenom. All right, so that's kind of like how this is going to look. Uh, we do have an additional ability here that I didn't mention. Uh, we do have our Shadow Step. So Shadow Step will basically just teleport us behind the target. It's pretty nice for getting around. It's not a super integral part of our kit or anything here. All right, so we're going to garrot, rupture, ambush, bone spike, into a shiv, get our slice and dice back up. We're going to start building combo points with mutilate. Then we're going to do our kidney punch again. Mutilate. There we go. All right. I'll do the same thing over here. We got full combo points. We're going to garrot. I'm going to go ahead and make the call to Envenom there instead of do the Rupture because we had five combo points and I'd rather get the full damage from that. So again, that's like an area where you can make the call, like the weak auras doesn't really play for you. All right, so we're going to go up, we're going to Garrot, we're going to get our Slice and Dice going, we're going to use that Ambush, we're going to Bone Spike, we're going to Tab over. And bone spike our other target go back to our main targets and we're just going to get that kidney punch in there we're gonna go ahead and cast our little healing pots and then we're just gonna work our way back into our normal rotation here it was telling me to cast um rupture but i didn't want to cast rupture because the target was almost dead there so i didn't want to use the combo points on that Right. Instead, maybe what I want to do is, you know, come over here and I could just re up my slice and dice. Right. So that is Assassination Rogue. Um, I think we pretty much covered everything that you might want to do with your different abilities. This is a very much a passive, like hands off. Don't do a whole lot of stuff um, in terms of extra buffs and debuffs and everything. It really just comes down to putting a bunch of bleeds on the target and keeping up slice and dice on yourself. Um, so pretty straightforward build. Uh, as we get further into the talent tree, since I am not quite level 70 yet, uh, for the most part, uh, we're going to end up just picking up some passive bonuses uh, that are going to uh, help increase our bleed damage and stuff like that as well. So there shouldn't really be any surprises in the full version of the build. Okay. All right, so now we're switching over to Subtlety. So our Subtlety Rogue is going to be focused on doing things from stealth and very much focused on dealing damage while buffed. So let's go ahead and get into the spell book here and talk about the differences that we see. So first off, uh, we're going to have a couple of new abilities in here. We have Shadow Step that we saw on the Assassination Rogue. Uh, the Shadow Step here is going to be nice for us as a Subtlety Rogue. Um, but again, it's not really something we work into our rotation. It's just going to teleport us behind our target, which is really nice uh, for situations like, you know, this target is up here and we can go stealth and then we can just Shadow Step up there and be behind the target, which is really nice uh, just to be able to do that. Uh, in addition, we have Shadow Dance. So Shadow Dance is going to be a super, super important uh, buff for us as Subtlety. Basically, if we are not in Shadow Dance, then we want to be in our Symbols of Death, which we'll talk about in a bit. And if we're not in either one of those, our damage really, really drops off. Um, but if we are in either one of those buffs, our damage is a little bit insane. Okay, so we want to try to stay in Shadow Dance or Symbols of Death whenever possible. So Shadow 
Dance has a one minute recharge. We have picked this up twice, so we have two charges of it. It allows the use of all stealth abilities and grants the combat benefits of stealth for eight seconds and increases your damage by 30%. So we get a flat 30% damage increase, but then also we get all the combo benefits of stealth and we're gonna have a lot of those as subtlety. Um, so we're gonna wanna stay in that. And that's pretty much what we have. You're gonna notice that Sinister Strike is not here because we have a different combo point uh, generator, which is gonna be Gloom Blade. So Gloom Blade is our replacement for our Sinister Strike here. Uh, it's going to deal damage to the target and bypass armor. And it will apply find weakness to the target for 10 seconds. So if we hop over to the talent tree, Right here, you can see find weakness. Your stealth abilities reveal a flaw in your target's defenses, causing all your attacks to bypass 30% of that enemy's armor for 10 seconds. So when we use our Gloom Blade, uh, our critical strikes will apply that debuff to the target, which lets us deal more damage to them, which is really nice. Now, just a quick caveat, if you are playing with friends who can tank or something for you, then you don't actually need Gloom Blade. This is a replacement for Backstab. Okay, Backstab is an ability that does a similar thing, but it does more damage when you are behind the target. It's really hard as a solo player to get behind the target consistently. You have ways to do it through like Shadow Step, or you can like disorient the target or stun the target. But doing all those things solo while absolutely like I mean, great in PvP and things like that. I, I just find that it's uh, too much of a hassle for just like grinding and doing your world quest. Uh, so I pick up Gloom Blade because it does more damage and it removes that requirement of having to be behind the target. But if you're like playing with a bear druid friend who's going to tank everything for you anyway, and you can always be behind the target, then you can actually remove this talent point for Gloom Blade and put it somewhere else and just use backstab instead. OK, just want to let you know that. So then we have our rupture ability, which we just saw in assassination. It's going to deal bleed damage over time. Again, just like with assassination, we're basically going to cast this at around three points just to get uh, a good amount of bleed damage out of it. But then keep the other combo points that we would spend for something that's going to deal more immediate damage. We have Shadow Strike and a Shadow Strike is essentially our replacement for Ambush. So Shadow Strike requires stealth. This is going to be our main opener from stealth. It's going to deal damage to the target. And while stealth, we strike through the shadows and appear behind our target up to 25 yards away, dealing 25% additional damage. So we get additional damage. Uh, we can teleport essentially behind our target, and we get three combo points when we use it from stealth. All right. And then we have Shuriken Storm. So this is our AOE ability, essentially. We hit this, it's gonna shoot out shurikens and we get one combo point per target hit. So unlike Assassination where our AOE only gives us one combo point but applies all our poisons, this one doesn't apply any poisons but it gives us one combo point per target. So it's in a quick and easy way to generate combo points in an AOE situation. We have Shuriken Toss. This is just a range ability. You throw it out, it hits the target, and then it gives you a combo point. We have Symbols of Death, which is our other buff that we can use. Um, so this has a 30 second cooldown. You invoke Ancient Symbols of Power, generating 40 energy and increasing damage done by 10% for 10 seconds. So essentially what you would normally do here is you would stack a lot of these um, buffs on yourself to do a bunch of damage to like a dungeon boss or something like that. And if you're going to fight like an elite or a rare spawn, then you would still want to do that, right? Shadow Dance and then go into Symbols of Death. So you have the 30% damage increase plus the 10% in damage increase. You're generating energy. You're getting all the benefits of stealth. Like you're just kind of compiling all these things for a big, strong burst window. But we're not going to do that here. So again, I'm going to go ahead right now and emphasize like you can absolutely min max these rotations more than what we're doing here in this video because we don't need to min max them that hard um, for this particular type of content. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay in Shadow Dance. And if we're out of Shadow Dance charges, 
then we're just going to throw symbols of death on ourselves. As far as it goes with the rotation helper, that's what it's going to tell you to do. It's going to tell you cast shadow dance. Okay. You used a charge, cast shadow dance again. You used a charge. Shadow dance is on cooldown and you don't have a buff. Use symbols of death. Okay, by the time you've done that, you've got a charge of Shadow Dance back, and you just keep rotating through Shadow Dance, Shadow Dance, Symbols of Death, Shadow Dance, Shadow Dance, Symbols of Death, over and over again. But, again, this is where I say the weak R's helpers don't play for you. It's entirely up to you. You could Shadow Dance and then stack Symbols of Death on top of it for the additional damage if you want to, if you want to make that part of your rotation, or if you're, again, going to fight an Elite or a Rare Spawn or something like that, uh, you could do that. Or if you just want to use it on cooldown for the extra damage you absolutely can that's not the way i designed the weak auras because i just like i said if you don't have any buff at all subtlety damage kind of drops off but if you have one buff it's pretty insane uh, so then we have a couple of passives here we have our mastery executioner this increases the damage done by our finishing moves and then we have shadow techniques so our attacks have a chance to generate uh, one combo point and seven energy. Okay, so just our auto attacks can generate combo points for us. Subtlety is very much about like just building up and kind of just hitting eviscerate over and over again, which we haven't talked about uh, because it's over here in the class tree. So this is our main finisher for subtlety. It is going to deal damage per combo points. And then targets with fine weakness will sh suffer an additional 40% of the damage as shadow. So basically, we're going to build up to this and we are going to just hit really hard. Uh, so that is what we have going on with our subtlety. Now, as far as the poisons go for this specialization, we're back to the default poisons plus our atrophic poison. So we're going to be applying instant poison and atrophic poison to our weapons. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll get our instant poison and we'll get our atrophic poison here. So we got those buffs on. If we hit the target, it's going to tell us to go stealth. And then I actually need to make a quick modification to my shadow strike here. Uh, actually, yeah, this one. I need to update my range check because we actually have 25 yards worth of distance that we can use it in. All right, so hopefully that is fine. Yep, so from here, from stealth, we can hit our shadow strike. And again, this is going to teleport us behind the targets, which is pretty nice. So like every other rogue specialization we've played before, we are going to want to hit our slice and dice uh, to get that buff on ourselves. And then after we slice and dice, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do a three point rupture on the target to get the bleed going. And then we're just going to go straight into eviscerate. Now for our subtlety rogue, what we're going to do is um, after we do our opener, we're going to get our shadow dance buff going. Um, and then again, if we're uh, out of shadow dance charges, we'll do symbols of death. But I'll show you how we can stack those uh, as well. All right, so we just go ahead and shadow strike, and then we're going to rupture, shadow dance, and then we've got enough points for an eviscerate, shadow strike, eviscerate, and you can see that's super quick. We generate so many combo points that this is literally going to be like shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, eviscerate. When we lose our shadow dance buff, we're going to use gloom blade instead of shadow strike. So that was kind of a lower health target. Let's try the same thing on this mammoth here. So shadow strike, rupture, shadow dance, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, shadow strike. And you can see like almost that whole time we could use our stealth abilities because we um, had shadow dance up, right? We've got shadow dance up again here. Um, we're going to want that slice and dice. I may not have that on the weak aura right now. Uh, I will double check before it gets put on the gilded. Just, just FYI. But it should be. Oh, oh, never mind. There's a reason. I always forget this, and I will explain it to you uh, after this enemy. So eviscerate, and we're good. 
Okay, so the reason that Slice and Dice does not come up on the Weak Artist Helper is because we have a talent point uh, over here. So premeditation. When entering stealth, your next Shadow Strike grants up to 10 seconds of Slice and Dice and generates two additional combo points if Slice and Dice is active. So basically, uh, we don't have to maintain Slice and Dice unless we're in combat for a prolonged period of time. So that's why it doesn't come up on the Weak Artist. Like if I click it off here, and then we come up here, we do our shadow strike. You'll see we have slice and dice right here. Okay. So shadow dance, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, shadow strike, eviscerate. This is a very, very simple rotation that just does a ton of damage. Uh, so let's go ahead and come over to the red bar enemies that we have over here. All right, we're going to go ahead and we'll throw our slice and dice buff up to use our combo points. All right, so shadow strike. We're going to get our rupture, shadow dance, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike. All right, we're out of shadow strike charges. So you're going to see when we go to our next enemy here. It should tell us to do symbols of death. So shadow strikes, symbols of death, rupture. All right, gloom blade, gloom blade, gloom blade, eviscerate. All right, we're going to just gloom blade a bunch into eviscerate. And that's how that combo works. Okay. So what I want to do next is I want to show you um, the stacking. All right, and maybe we'll do some stacking and then we'll we'll show some shuriken toss. OK, so here we're going to go stealth. So what we're going to do here is we're going to shadow strike. It's going to tell us to shadow dance and then we're just going to stack symbols of death on top of it manually, like, you know, uh, without the the aid of the weak artist helper. So shadow strike, rupture, shadow dance. We're going to hit symbols of death, shadow strike, eviscerate, shadow strike, shadow strike, eviscerate. Shadow strike, shadow strike. So you can see how we kind of stack symbols of death on top of that. Like it's it's nice. Ideally, what you'll do is you'll hit your um, symbols of death when you're lower on your energy because it does generate the four energy for you. Uh, but I just wanted to mainly show how you could stack the damage buff there. All right. So the final little thing we'll show here, if we can is we're going to show just how you use uh, Shuriken Storm. So again, uh, the Weak Artist Helper won't tell you to use this. It's up to you to know like, hey, I need to use the AOE ability in this AOE situation instead of the regular stuff. But we're going to basically pick our target here. Shadow Strike, Rupture. We can go ahead and Shuriken Storm, change targets and throw a Rupture on them. We're going to Shadow Dance, Shadow Strike, Eviscerate, Shadow Strike, Eviscerate, Shadow Strike. Shadow Strike, Eviscerate. All right, so in that situation, like I said, the weak R's didn't tell me everything. Like, I teleported over. I knew, okay, I'm in an AoE, so I'm going to get my combo points, and I'm going to rupture this target here. Then I'm going to cast Shuriken Storm. That's going to give me at least two combo points, and I probably will generate one from auto attacks. So then I can tab over to the other target and put a three point rupture on them and then go back to my main target and just get back into my main rotation of uh, get shadow dance on myself and do my shadow strikes into my eviscerates. And that is pretty much subtlety rogue. Uh, we pretty much covered everything. I know Shiv here is on the bar. We don't really use this. Uh, it's down there just because, but it's not really part of our rotation. Uh, so again, that is Subtlety Rogue. As we move into the rest of the build here, uh, for the most part, we are going to be taking uh, some more passive things. We're actually going to get in and get a seventh combo point, I believe. Um, and that'll just let us do more damage right now. You can see we generate combo points very quickly. So having that seventh one is just going to make our eviscerate hit even harder. And then we're going to get it into, um, this talent here, finality, where basically if we cast eviscerate, it's going to increase the damage of our next eviscerate by 15%. And since we eviscerate, 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 uh, that's going to up our damage, uh, quite a bit. So the 70 version of this build, 
Uh, shouldn't have any big surprises in it either that we haven't covered in the video. All right, so that is all three of the rogue specializations. So that is your builds for Outlaw, Assassination, and Subtlety. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, I'm going to re-emphasize like you absolutely 100% can min-max these rotations way harder for dungeons, group content, raids, that kind of stuff. Um, but as you can see in actual practice out in the open world, the rotations and stuff that are established here through the weak RS helper and through the talent builds and everything, they get the job done really, really well. Um, so these are definitely good to use in that type of content. So, uh, let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of the build. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them for you. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope you're enjoying this new format where we kind of do all the specializations in one go. I definitely do. This one was a little bit longer uh, than the shaman one, but that's just because rogues have a lot of extra abilities, right? Uh, so. Uh, with all that said, I appreciate your time. Give the video a like, you know, thumbs up, subscribe, check out the Gilded community, and I will see you on the next video.